Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. Talk about a lot of different stuff, um, from the coronavirus to deportation to Love Island, lots of different stuff. But today, um, I wanted to talk about two Chinese um, children um, that were attending a school in Milton Keynes, and they were excluded because the teachers found out they had visited China. So rather than investigate how far the um, the children visited, well, it wasn't even both children, it was the mother and the daughter. The daughter is six, the son is ten. So rather than investigate, how far is Beijing from Wuhan? Oh no, they decide that, oh my God, they've visited China, therefore they, they, they are susceptible to the coronavirus. And that is the mentality of a lot of people. The people, any, I mean, Chinese people are actually being victimized now and profiled and attacked because of this coronavirus. Do you know how big China is? It's not everyone in China who's got the coronavirus. And yet, they're treating people, all you've got to do is say China, and, you know, everybody's scared about the coronavirus. That's not how it works. So these two poor little children were not only isolated, were called, you might as well call it quarantined, because they was, play, they was placed in this, um, this surgical unit, I don't know for how long, but they were told they can't come to school for two weeks. I guess that's to see whether or not the symptoms, they had any of the symptoms. I can understand people being fearful when people go to China, especially if you don't know much about the geography. But I think when they were saying that where the children actually visited was 1,200 kilometers from Wuhan. The only thing is, is that it's not only Wuhan, that's got the coronavirus. And so uh, if it can leave the country and attack um, 10 other countries, it can also attack countries within China. And I don't think the parents quite understood that. They're saying that, you know, the children were kind of, I guess, victimized or discriminated against because they were China Chinese and they went to China, more or less, because they understand the geography. They understand, the parents understand that maybe they're not in that kind of environment. But China, now, it's just associated with the coronavirus and the, um, what, you, what was the other thing that they, bird flu. And that's what people think about when they think about China. So I don't know, do you think that the school did a right thing in not sending the children to school? Well, not sending them, by excluding them from school and saying they can't show at school for two weeks because they visited China. Do you think that was a sensible thing to do or do you think they were overreacting based on the fact that where they visited was like the equivalent from London to Warsaw. That's the equivalent distance. I'd be interested in your thoughts. Apart from that, um, there was something else I wanted to say. Um, hmm, where's it gone now? Well, Mona, you can't always be organised, can you? If you were, you'd be perfect. <laughs> And I am far from perfect. So where the hell did I put this Chinese thing now that I want to talk about? Okay. So now we have the UKVI confirmed to UKCISA that they are working on a short-term operational response to issues related to the virus. The UKVI are on it and basically there should be some kind of mechanism so that Chinese students feel reassured that they won't be treated as overstayers. What's also happening is that Chinese people, they can't get back to China because they're not allowing people in and they're not allowing people out. So the ones that are here who are students, they're concerned because their visa is due to expire. 
that they are going to be treated as overstayers, therefore illegal immigrants and all of that. So what's happening is, is that the Home Office is, they're trying to get the Home Office to reassure them that they won't be treated as illegal immigrants. Now, this is a prime example of how people develop the label of illegal immigrant. Now, this isn't any fault of their own. And just because you know the circumstances doesn't make it any easier for people who you don't know the circumstances of and still acquire the label illegal immigrant. Because this is a similar thing, because now they haven't got a visa. Their visas run out because they can't get back in China. They're illegal immigrants. So what are you going to do about that? What are you going to say? Are you going to throw the book at them or what? It is thought that students who can't return home will be able to request leave outside of the normal rules. UKVI is expected to release full guidance on February the 7th, which is today. Our main queries last week related to students whose flights had been cancelled and were unable to travel home, but whose visas were due to expire, Chief Executive of UKCISA and Marie Graham told The Pie. Graham added that within the next three months, there's going to be quite a few students who are due to return home. In a UK, SI, in a UK CISA statement, Graham explained that students with visiting family members who were unable to return to China should get in touch with their UKVI account manager. The movement of Chinese nationals is also causing issues in the UK independent school sector. The Boarding Schools Association has released guidance saying that any child who travels to China should spend a period of 14 days in the UK before returning to school and should self-isolate during this time. So this is probably the ruling that the school was following. Only that there was another um, ruling in the school, I'm going to put the link in, that was saying that it was only areas that were a certain distance from Wuhan that it would apply to. But I mean, if you haven't got that guidance, you're going to go by this guidance. And that's probably why they excluded those two children. Of course, the problem with that is that if the parent comes over to the UK and spends time with the child, if they happen to be infected themselves, they might give it to the child and then the child might go back into school. UK in universities are on high alert. The UK's first case of coronavirus announced on January the 31st involved an international student at the University of York and a family member that had travelled to the UK with him. Increased number, numbers of hand sanitizers are across all colleges, departments and public areas. UK CISA's Graham flagged that there has been cases of abuse against Chinese students sparked by the outbreak, as if they're responsible for it. The other thing that obviously we're very keen to do is make sure that Chinese students feel supported while they're here in the country. How can they feel supported if everybody's shunning them? It's almost like they've got the bloody plague. I'm wondering how that affects the um, nail shops. You know, where you go and do your nails and your feet. I wonder if it affects that. Because I know they're not all Chinese but I mean people in the UK it's not as if they're going to go up to them and say are you Chinese providing they've got providing they've got a certain look they're not going to know whether or not they're from the Philippines whether or not they're from Vietnam they're not going to know so I wonder if it's going to affect their business that'd be interesting to know wouldn't it so um, we have been concerned about stories around xenophobia and other attacks on students. There's been one in Sheffield that we're aware of, and we just have to keep an eye on that and trying to get some positive messages out to reassure the students. But the thing is, they've already kind of made it look like, oh, my God, you know, anything to do with China or Chinese, you know, you're going to get the coronavirus. You know, it's ignorance. And plus, oh, I don't even want to go there before me get myself in a trouble.
So that's all for now. Bye-bye.